It turns out that uh, patients with autism spectrum disorder are very heterogeneous. What that means is that uh, patients may present with very different symptoms uh, when they first present, or they may have very different uh, genetic contributing factors or environmental contributing factors. Uh, so for example, some patients present with severe aggression or self-injury. Other patients may have uh, very severe rituals or severe rigidity. Other individuals may have uh, no language. Other patients may present first with seizures, for example. Uh, so patients present with a range of different kinds of symptoms when they first come in for treatment. Second, it turns out that we used to think that there were only one or two genes that played an important role uh, in uh, contributing to the development of autism. Now we know that there are probably 200 different genes that present in different individuals. And because of the idea that things are very heterogeneous, that there are a range of different genes or contributing factor, that makes it much harder to treat any particular individual and it makes, makes it more difficult in our clinical trials to show that an active medicine separates from a placebo medicine. One important strategy in dealing with this is to try to uh, look at syndromal forms of autism. So that means forms of autism that are associated with a single gene deficit uh, so we know what the underlying uh, genetic or molecular mechanisms are that are involved. We can personalize our treatment or match a specific treatment for that molecular mechanism in a small subgroup of individuals who present with what we call a syndromal form of autism or autism associated with one specific genetic problem that presents with symptoms of autism. So social communication problems or repetitive behaviors, for example, or seizures or language deficits. At Montefiore Medical Center, we're doing a breakthrough new research in Prader-Willi syndrome. So it turns out that patients with Prader-Willi syndrome have a specific abnormality on chromosome 15 and when you look at the brains of individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome, there is a malformation of the oxytocin neurons leading from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary. Because we know that there's a malformation in the oxytocin neurons, we can develop breakthrough new treatments. So we can give oxytocin, for example, to individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome who present with symptoms of an autism spectrum disorder. And we are more likely to see a, a big change with the active medicine compared to a placebo. So this is sort of a, a, a very new approach to developing new treatments in autism, is to focus on orphan populations or rare syndromes that present with autism where we know what the underlying uh, genetic defect and molecular mechanism is, to match that to a specific novel treatment and then develop new treatments. Uh, if, we can, uh, f if we can develop new treatments for syndromal forms of autism, that that may also benefit the large population of individuals with heterogeneous or idiopathic autism.